Hi, Steve Jack here, and I'm at uh, Harefield Sports Academy. Uh, I'm here with uh, Pat, and uh, Pat's the executive director, which means she's the big cheese of the whole place <laughs> here at Harefield Academy and looks after things. And uh, I've been here working with Wool Jam, but I've been so amazed and impressed by the Harefield setup here that I thought, just while I've got Pat here, I'd grab her just to get a quick insight to because I know that a lot of people in the, um, in the fitness industry are sometimes interested and what's happened at academies, and I thought I'd just quickly um, just chat with you on camera about no what's going on here, because I really can sense there's a new breed of professionals that come out of this place. So how long has the Harefield Academy been uh, open for? Um, we took over five years ago. Yeah. Um, and when you and say we took over, what was here before? Um, it was a failing school, a school that um, was very challenging, and had a cocktail of issues. Um, and basically sponsors bought this particular school, and the idea was to try and find... Um, a vehicle for change and to turn the school around and the, the vehicle for change was physical education and sport. Yep. And the only problem with that um, is that you need to look at both ends of the market, you need to look at um, the grassroots yep. and we need to look at elitism and we've been very successful in the programmes that we've put in place. One of the things that's been impressive to me is that how the school's been taken in only five years, this is mine, is that they've taken from one of the bottom performance schools, both in terms of academia and in terms of sport, and in five years you're now considered the elite of the elite, both in terms of academia and in terms of, uh, say, sport. So what would you say is one of the things that's kind of turned it around before we get into what goes on here? Um, I think it's looking for the simple answers because um, I think if you start looking for the complexities then you bring in so many dynamics that you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Sure. So we look at simple answers to very complex situations. Great. So simple as a key, we love simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for instance, um, youngsters are not attending a school. Uh, why are they not attending a school? It's because they haven't got a purpose and they don't have ownership. Yep. So we then f therefore look at programmes of ownership and make sure that youngsters do have a purpose and there's a reason sure. for coming to school. Fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit now about maybe some of the facilities and the setup that we have here because I mean, I mean it's been a long time since I've been into a school, but flipping it, this blew my mind. I, I walk into uh, the, the lobby downstairs and there's 30, 40 computers. It's like blooming, like Darth Vader's little starship enterprise here. I thought I was walking into Star Trek. Uh, smart boards where you touch the screen and there's a PowerPoint presentation you can draw on the screen. And so let's just quickly review some of the uh, facilities here, but because from a professional athlete point of view, these kids from say between 13 and 17 are actually here for their sport. So I was chatting to some of the footballers who were here at the academy because they're linked to Watford. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk through a typical day for, say, one of the footballing kids who are here on the football scholarships? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the main problem with the system that we have in this country is that we don't recognise elitism until it actually is elitism. That's and it. Um, the development area is the area that really does need to be addressed and where it needs to, be, uh, needs to have a real... Um, financial boost and it needs to have some structure and some direction. So what we did here at the academy is looked at um, a young footballer and their, the footballer's life and basically they go to school like any other youngster, um, they do their day's work and then they shoot home with their homework underneath their arm, um, they throw the homework down, they grab something to eat as they're going out the door and being driven by their parent to wherever the academy program is training. And of course, that's not the ideal scenario. Uh, you want to become no, a professional a foul, foul athlete. Situation so again. what you guys have done is completely turned that all around yep. and kind of tracked what actually turned them into almost a professional football and put school around that. Absolutely. So how does that work? Well, all it, all it needed was us to take each youngster, to take their life, make it into a jigsaw puzzle, move the jigsaw puzzle pieces around, and then make sure they fit. So now what happens is the youngsters get picked up, brought into school, we track their academic performance in school. They train during the school day, yes. which is the, the optimum time to train. Yep. So they get to like a two-hour training session during the day. Any work that they miss, they then make up on a session after school. We have a continental finish, so we finish at half past two with a two-hour two enrichment. During that enrichment time, the youngsters actually catch up on their studies. Yep. They then have their tea, yep. and they're ready to train again, yep. and they get home at a reasonable time to have some family life. Great, so what, what that looks like is that I was speaking to one of the kids uh, yesterday, they come in for uh, 8, 10-15, uh, they ditch school and they go to training, so uh, some of the football academy facilities, how many football pitches do you have here? 
Um, we have two pitches out the back here yes. in the training grid and, like and also um, goalkeeping areas. And then over the other side of the road, there's another two football pitches that we Grass. utilise, which belong to the yeah <coughs> belong to the council. And then you have an indoor facility as well, yep. which is kind of on the 3G surface. How uh -huh. many pitches there? The the 3G pitch is a 60 by 40. It's an indoor area just yep. over there. But then also they use the Astro area. Fantastic. So 10:15, they're in. They do train for an hour and a half. They're back to school, so their classes kind of move all around that, and then they kind of finish school at 2.30 but they'll do their catch up classes and then they go uh, train again and then go home so it really is a life like a little mini pro mm. and for all the other different sports would that be kind of similar? Very similar yeah, yeah. so we have a very strong uh, basketball academy yeah. um, and we also have a table tennis academy and we also have um, ice skaters, swimmers at national level. Yeah. Uh, ice hockey players at national level yeah. and so on and so forth because we're aspirational led we're not particularly sport led yeah. and it's looking at the real challenge is looking at how you support those individuals so it's the physiotherapy the education about nutrition and preparation yeah. for training and those sort of elements and of course um, there, there is sort of a, a cross scenario there where all of of those uh, particular support agencies can come together and support any athlete regardless of what their sport is. I think what's um, phenomenal about here that I've seen as an outsider coming in, I've been working with the coaches and the students here and getting really cl um, clear feedback on what we're doing with Wool Jam is that actually there's a real culture of success because mm. you know you walk around the walls, the students who have been successful at national and international level all been profiled and there's photographs and they're all getting encouraged, like it's not actually hard work to go and engage in their mm. sport um, because everyone around's mm. into it. So the culture there is phenomenal. I know that everyone's very proud of all the achievements. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, say, um, uh, creating culture change, that's something that I guess is of interest to some people in terms of leadership. Mm. In terms of when you, you first came in and the funding first came in and, and all the facilities started going up, What's, what's one of the key elements around then leadership in terms of taking uh, an organisation that's kind of underperforming and then in such a short time period, you've done phenomenally well, mm. to take it to the, probably the, one of the top performing schools in the country? Well, the greatest thing for us was to be able to have a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. So on that blank sheet of paper, putting down the issues yeah. on one side and then looking at the performance indicators that are recognised by government. Yeah. Uh, by um, sporting national bodies, etc., and then looking at how you can bring the two together, and you know you end up with something that's very simplistic um, and works. Yeah, which is simple as that. S simple as the key, and then Absolutely. I guess tracking that and uh, having tracking. Making sure it. you track it, making sure that you've got somebody to watch what you're doing yeah. and see the impact, and then be able to report on that impact. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Can't be easier, really. Yeah. I notice also here at the school they have phenomenal uh, nutrition systems. We had great lunches yesterday. You've got a great company. What's the company you're working Kuchina. with? Kachina. Kachina. So if you're in a school environment, you're wanting <laughs> someone that's got high, because I'm so big on nutrition that most children are being sent to school just with the wrong nutrition food for their brain to concentrate and do well. They're doing an amazing job here on the nutrition side. Everything just seems to work great. So, uh, so Pat, thank you so much for your pleasure. time, um, and you've been a great host for us both here. We're very grateful for uh, everything you put on for us, and amazing job. And I know that you're going to produce a lot of national champions out of here because you've got such so. a good uh, culture of success. So thanks very much. Thanks very much. Cool.